I'm going to show you how I made a card with the pretty new Seaside Wishes Stamp Set Bundle. This is one from the upcoming Stampin' Up! 2024-2025 uh, annual catalog, which will be available for customers to order starting on the 1st of May. Um, this is one of the bundles that is available for demonstrators to pre-order right now. So if you are a demonstrator, you can get your hands on this early. Um, or if you're interested in joining, now is a great time to join um, because, yeah, you get to... Uh, Actually, you can add this as one of the items in your starter kit if you would like. And um, yeah, so it's a great little bundle. And uh, it's another one of those, sorry, I'm looking at the screen. It finally went live on my computer and I can see I'm all sorts of crazily crooked on here. Um, so it's one of the bundles that you can actually pre-order. And it's one of the hybrid embossing folders. And I'll show you in a minute how all that works together. Um, but yeah, so this is it. This is the card. It's got some of the um, Country Woods Designer Series paper for the background of it, which I love. Um, the wood grain to me is perfect for everything, but definitely perfect for beach type cards. So I thought it would work for the background on this one. So I see you, Sally and Shannon and Pam and Gwen are all here. So thanks everybody for hopping in today. I appreciate you being here. So again, this is the card we're making. Um, this is the Seaside Wishes stamp set, which uh, it's one of the photopolymers, so it's easy to see through and easy to stamp with. It's got some really good sentiments on it. Hopefully you can see them all there without the glare on the screen. Sorry about that. And then I love these sand dollar images. And then when you add the embossing to it, in my opinion, it makes them look just like real <laughs> sand dollars almost. I mean, you, it, it really adds a lot of texture to it. Hopefully you can see it in the video okay, but definitely in my hands I can see the, the texture on it. So... Um, it is a really, it's a cool stamp set. I, I hope that you like it. So um, Susan and I see Bobby and Robbie and, or Robin, I'm sorry, and uh, Roxanne are all here as well. All right, so this is the hybrid embossing folder. And actually this comes with the dies and the embossing folder together. So when, when it's called the hybrid embossing folder, you actually get both pieces to it. And um, it's bundled together. So you save 10% if you purchase the stamp set um, embossing folder and dies as uh, with the bundle price, with the bundle numbers, what I'm trying to say. So um, you can also get them separately. But like I said, um, there is no way to purchase just the dies or just the embossing folder. It comes together as a set. So hopefully that all makes sense. And um, like I said, this is, it's really cool um, how they work together, and you can actually cut and emboss at the same time. So I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. All right, um, one other thing that I did use on this, these are the wild fern dies, and I used the middle die, the rectangle die, to cut out my sentiment on my card today. Um, but other than that, that's all I used from this die set. So, all right, Ooh, let me set that over there too. And then online exclusives, just wanted to do a quick reminder, as you are picking up those final retiring items from the... Um, retired item sale that is going on now there are some really good deals out there there's stuff that's up to 60 percent off like some die sets way cheap so if you are interested go take a peek out in the online store right now and uh, don't forget to look at the online exclusives when you're out there buying your last couple of items from the retiring list um, again the retiring sale is all things out there are while supplies last and um, up to 60% off, and then everything will go away that's retiring on the 30th of April, so they won't be around anymore after that. Online exclusives are totally separate from any catalog. They, are, they come and go in the online store, so you will see them in and out. If there are things that you like in there, go grab them. And then uh, if not, just keep checking until you find something you do want, and yeah. So they'll come and go. They're not tied to any catalog, and like I said, you can only see them out in the online store. So yeah. All right, so let's get going on the card. I have got Basic Beige, which is one of the new colors from the Stampin' Up! catalog. Um, I don't know. It's, I don't know if it is better or worse when I hold it up. It's sort of kind of like River Rock is sort of what it reminds me of, but it's, it's different than that. It's lighter, I think, than River Rock was. Of course, I don't have that color anymore, so I can't compare them side by side. But it's a similar tone. It's got a little bit of a green undertone to it kind of a mix between very vanilla and river rock is what I will call it. So there you go. That is my unprofessional assessment of the color. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I you have got some of the Country Woods Designer Series paper. This is one side. Flip side has got the dark on it. And actually, I used basically one side for one piece, one side for the other piece. So um, this is from the same piece of designer series paper. And this Country Woods designer series paper, along with the basic beige cardstock, will be available to order starting on the 1st of May for customers. And again, they're both available right now for demonstrators to pre-order. 
And if you want to join during the month of April, you can add these items to your starter kit, which is always a great deal. You get to um, pick $125 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise of your choice. can be anything. And uh, you pay $99 and plus tax if that applies in your area. And your kit will ship for free. And yeah, so it's a good deal. And then once you join, and uh, anything that you purchase as a demonstrator, you get the at least a 20% discount on. So that's always a good deal too. All right. Good thing I used the liquid glue today because I definitely uh, was struggling a little to get that lined up straight. <laughs> so I'm, basic beige, I think, is going to be one of my favorite colors, too. I mean, I've always liked very vanilla, but I think this one is going to be kind of a go-to because it just goes with everything, I think. So, all right, got another piece. This piece, um, to start out with my card base, I should have said that to start with, uh, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter in the middle. So it's a half sheet of standard cardstock. Card front um, was cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And then this piece is cut to about an inch and a half by about five and a half wide. And we are gonna use a little stamp and seal and we're just gonna stick that here on the card front. So, uh, whoop, come on. There we go, stamp and seal, get started. There we go, a little around the edges. And you can also use your um, liquid glue if you prefer that. I just don't prefer it because I usually make a big darn mess when I, when I try to um, use liquid glue. So trying to get this roughly centered here is, um, I feel like that's not very, did not do a very good job in the centering of that. Yeek. There we go. That looks a little bit more like centered. So using my grid paper to help me hopefully get this on here somewhat straight and somewhat centered. That's always the goal. And whether we get either one is always questionable. So there we go. All right, stuck that down with a little bit of stamp and seal. So hey everybody, thanks for joining. I appreciate y'all being here today. Uh, what's next? A little stamping, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and stamp our um, starfish. So there are two sizes in this stamp set. There's the bigger one and the smaller one. And I'm sure that these are a specific type of starfish. I just call them starfish because I don't know the official name for them. <laughs> and then I've got crushed curry ink. Hey, Daryl, thanks for hopping in today. So uh, crushed curry ink, and we're gonna ink up the little, the bigger of the two starfish in crushed curry and stamp that. And then the smaller one as well and stamp that. And we'll close up that ink pad before I stick my fingers in it. And then I'm also going to stamp while I've got it my sentiment here. So I've got another little piece of basic white cardstock. And then I've got the sentiment that is uh, your friendship is the best gift. And I've got early espresso ink, and we're going to stamp that on basic white cardstock. And I'll do the die cutting these at the same time so that um, hopefully I can get that part done and then show you the fun part of it, which is the cool embossing folder. So, all right, set that aside. Hey, Rosie, thanks for joining. Glad you're here today. So, all right, let me grab the die set. So again, there are dies that coordinate with the larger, uh, the, both of the starfish. And they're not terribly difficult to line up. Um, the larger one, obviously, there's kind of a little dent or a little bend in the one <laughs> little um, starfish arm. And so that one's fairly easy to line up. So that's going to be that one. And then this one, oh, I probably stamped them a little close together. I may have to run them through separately. Um, this one, you just kind of have to pay attention and make sure you end up with the longer arms in the right spot, which I did not. So you may have to kind of twist it around. There we go. So that's how that one will line up. So again, it's just a matter of twirling it until you get to the right spot. All right, let me go die cut all these things. Oh, and I forgot. Um, my sentiment, I am cutting with the middle die from the Wild Ferns die. So run these through the die cutting machine and I'll be right back. There's my larger starfish, got that one done. And then our smaller starfish in sentiment, maybe. Oh, whoop, sorry, almost threw it on the floor. And there are the other two little die cuts here. So let's put that back on the sheet before I lose track of all of these. 
Get this one out of the way. And set that one aside. And we'll set these over here so that I hopefully don't make a mess and stamp all over stuff I'm not supposed to. Um, next thing, I did do one of them ahead since it's kind of the same process all the way along. And uh, got some pieces of basic beige cardstock. Now, with this embossing folder and the way that it stamps and cuts, it was easiest for me to stamp them individually, each of the little sand dollars, and then cut them afterwards. If you are more creative than I am and have more time and energy and, <laughs> and want to make it easier for yourself in the long run, you could probably set up a template for exactly where to place the um, sand dollars on a block and stamp them together at the same time and then die cut it together and all that, but I just wasn't, I, that took more planning than I was able to do. <laughs> So I'm just being honest that I'm kind of a lazy stamper and this is the easiest way. So um, it is a new set, uh, Deborah. It is called um, Seaside Wishes and this is the stamp set and we're gonna be playing with the dies here in just a second. All right, so crumb cake ink and I'm stamping it on basic beige cardstock. And I've got my larger sand dollar here. I'm gonna just ink it up well and stamp that here on a piece of basic beige cardstock. And like I said, I used two separate um, pieces of cardstock for this actually three separate because I did a third one, um, just because it was easier for me that way than it was to try to get everything lined up and turned the right way and all that sort of thing for the stamping and the die cutting. So I'm gonna run it through my die cutting machine twice. So there are the two um, stamped images. And hopefully you can tell the difference between these on the video. I don't know, I'll hold it still for a second. So hopefully you can see the difference with the embossing on this one. And this one is just the stamped image. And while the stamped image is still pretty, I think the embossing really adds a lot to it. Okay, so let's start doing the um, die cutting part. Actually, I should start at the beginning. When you are doing using any of the 3D embossing folders, and that includes the 3D with the hybrid um, die set in it, any of the, the 3D embossing folders, you're going to use your base plate, um, which this is a stamp and cut and emboss machine, but there are other machines that you can use this with as well. Um, just use your base plate and then you're going to put your embossing folder with the dies and the paper inside it right on top of the base plate. And then you're going to use the number four plate, which is also called the specialty plate. And you can order this specialty plate separately if you do not have this machine. Um, it comes with the stamp and cut and emboss machine, but you can also order it separately. And you use these together, and this will give you perfect embossing and die cutting, or perfect embossing with just the 3D embossing folders every time. So there you go. All right. So that's my little lecture on that. <laughs> so, um, all right. So I've got my. Uh, die set here so this is again part of the hybrid embossing folder dies and then we're going to slide this right here inside the embossing folder and just find the spot where it fits now it doesn't like click into place but you can definitely tell when you have it in the right spot because it just doesn't really want to move around in there and you put it on the side that's got the stampin up logo on it so you're going to place the die with the cutting side up down on the stamp it up side of the embossing folder then we're going to flip it over and we are gonna take the larger of the two sand dollars and we're gonna slide it here inside the embossing folder. Now, when I'm putting it in here, I'm probably gonna to have to twirl it around just a little bit, but you can kind of see that this is generally the way that it's gonna go in the embossing folder. What I'm looking for is this is kind of a wider and that one's the wider. And then this is a little smaller and that one's a little smaller. So I know generally that this is the way it's gonna go into the embossing folder. And we're just gonna slide it in here and center it and line it up as best we can. Now I will tell you, it's, um, I have trouble getting it lined up exactly perfectly. And with most things in nature, I don't think it has to be exactly perfectly. So <laughs> I just put it in there. And generally what I'm looking for is I want the non-stamped areas here to line up. So those are kind of what I, was, what I looked for when I lined it up. And if they lined up, then I went, it's good. And we're gonna run it through the die cutting machine that way. So I'm gonna hold everything in place and I'm gonna go run this through my die cutting machine. And then what we get out the other side is, the flip side is even cool on it. So hopefully you can see the embossing on the back side of it. Um, but this is what we get when it comes out the other side. So it's got the embossing on it and it's all die cut for us. So, all right, so I'm gonna set, get these pieces here out of the way. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the smaller one. There is not a stamped image for the, the this one, I'm sorry, the medium sized um, 
little sand dollar in here, but you can definitely cut and emboss just the sand dollar without uh, the stamping on it as well. So again, this one, what I'm looking for is this is my kind of longer edge on it. And then there's a little shorter edge here. So that is what I'm looking for when I'm lining it up. We got a longer piece here, longer piece here. So longer, 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 longer. That generally will get me in the right place, hopefully. And then we're just gonna slide it here into the embossing folder, generally lining it up and squeezing it down. If you ink the embossing folder on the side without the Stampin' Up! logo, will there be, uh, will it be the same as the individual stamped and die cut? I will show you in one second what that will, well, I'm not gonna ink it, but I'll show you the side that will come out. So, all right, hang on, let me run this through the die cutting machine. So you're wanting to ink the side without the um, um, Stampin' Up! logo on it. Oh, where's my, here it is. I'm like, where did I put the die sheet? Oh, right in front of my face. <laughs> All right. So that is actually going to be the reverse side of this. So you would have inked it like, ink the reverse side. Now, it, it would probably work, but it's just going to, um, like the inked part would be down here and it'd be almost the depressed part, if that makes sense, when you're looking at it, rather than the embossed or the part that's kind of stuck up. So um, you might be able to take a blending brush and kind of do a blending brush on this side and then cut and emboss it with that. I haven't tried it, to be honest. But if you do it like you would a normal embossing folder where you're going to put the, the ink on the this side of it, you're going to get sort of the backwards image, if that makes sense. So it'll be like the upside down image. And if that's what you want, then that's awesome and you can do it that way. Um, but if you want it to be inked on the top like this, you probably would have to use a blending brush or a sponge dauber or something and kind of swirl it around on the, the kind of the concave, I think is what it is, <laughs> inside of the folder. Geometry was a while ago for me, sorry. All right. The other thing, I did do a little bit more of the die cutting ahead of time. So I did cut these from Granny Apple Green cardstock. And these are the little um, kind of seaweed looking dies. So there are three of those here on my hybrid embossing folder. So those are the dies that I used to cut that little seagrass with. And now we're just going to start sticking things together. I used glue dots for pretty much everything here, except the sentiment. Um, because I wanted to, to make sure that I kind of could slide things around and, and push things under and make sure that it, everything landed where I wanted it to be. So I'm going to start with my largest of uh, the sand dollars. And I'm putting, trying to keep my glue dots towards the center because I know I'm going to be sliding things kind of in and around it. So I want to make sure that I end up with those sort of near the center. And I think, mm -hmm, I'm trying to decide whether I should, yeah, I think we'll put it down a little bit lower down here. I'm trying to look at my sample and figure out where everything landed on there. And then I'm gonna grab the little seagrass die cuts and we're gonna just stick a couple of those here. I'm gonna put one glue dot down a little lower and one up a little higher. I don't know if you heard that, my air conditioner of course just kicked on right before I, let me rip this off or snip this off a little bit. This is gonna be a little too long. There we go, try that. Um, my air conditioner started running right before I went live, so I was like, eh, hopefully it's not too loud. <laughs> so it's actually a beautiful day here in New Jersey. It's We're supposed to get up to, I don't know, 70-something. And then, of course, tomorrow it's going to be like 50 degrees. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. The weather can't decide. It's a little bit... Uh, a little bit crazy, um, depending on the day. I kind of keep, you know, I keep looking at the weather and trying to figure out what I should be wearing and what the kids should be wearing to school every day. And it's it's been a bit of a challenge lately. So, all right, get the last little piece of seagrass stuck on here. I'm glad y'all are liking this bundle. It's it's really an awesome one. And yeah, you just don't even ask, just get it. If you question it at all, yep, just get it. All right, and I'm trimming off the bottom of the seagrass just a little bit because it's. Obviously, it was too long, and it's hitting my um, glue dots that I put down in the center that I thought I had sunk down in low enough, but I clearly had not. So there you go. Yep, so yeah, you know what I mean if you're in Pennsylvania. So yeah, it's been a little crazy weather-wise here. <laughs> so turned on the air conditioner in, you're in Missouri, aren't you? Um, Mary Kay, I think that's where you're at. So yeah, I, yeah, it's been crazy. I don't know. Like I said, it's, you know, one day it's hot and then the next day I'm freezing and <laughs> then it's hot again. So, all right, we're going to stick on that little sand dollar or um, starfish. Then we're going to put on the other sand dollar over the top of that one. All right. 
stick that down. So we want quite a bit of the, the little starfish to show because you want to be able to tell what it is. And we'll stick that down with some um, glue dots. You could also put these on with dimensionals if you wanted to. I was trying to minimize the bulk on my card a little bit just because I mail most of my cards. And sometimes by the time I put, you know, 12 layers of dimensionals on them, then they're too thick to mail. <laughs> so, all right. Can't believe it'll be in yet. So, all right. Oh, you're not finding the bundle? Yeah, sorry, Roxanne. Yep, it is an, a new bundle. So if you do not have the new catalog yet, you probably have not seen it. But as of May 1st, it'll be live, and you'll, you'll be able to see it in the Stampin' Up! online store at that point. So, all right. There we go. Um, and again, it's called Seaside Wishes. So, all right. Uh, next up, I tied a little bow with uh, linen thread. And I'm just going to try to do my little rabbit ear bow making my two rabbit ears, twisting one over the top of the other and pulling it through, hopefully. Come on, whoop, pulled it a little bit too far. There we go, back, back. <laughs> so, all right, um, pulled my little bow here and grab my snips and chop off the little extra string from the linen thread. I usually am a little generous in the um, bow department when I go to, to make them because you can always pull them a little smaller and uh, cut off the ends, but it's a little difficult to uh, make them bigger. I have discovered that. So, all right. Oh, thanks, Deb, for looking that up. Yes, it's. I knew it was in the catalog. I don't know all the page numbers yet. <laughs> so, all right. There we go. We'll stick that on with a little glue dot here. Okay, I still may end up trimming the ends on that just a little bit more. Then I've got my sentiment that we've die cut already. And again, the sentiment is also from that st same stamp set. And where are my dimensionals? Here they are. Um, and uh, I cut it out with one of the wild fern dies. So if you missed that earlier in the, um, the video, it's a wild fern die set that I used to cut my sentiment out. And I'm just going to layer it over the top of both the, the little sand dollars and then as well as my twine to make sure that I cover up the big glue dot glob in the middle of there because nobody wants to see that. It looks kind of icky. All right, then we're going to go ahead and trim off, I think, a little bit of each of the ends here because they're a little, little longer than I like them to be. All right, trimming down the linen thread just a little bit. And then the final thing that I've got on the card front is a couple of the flat adhesive backed pearls. And these are in the current annual catalog and they'll be in the next one as well. So I'm gonna take one of the larger ones and we'll stick that down here under the sentiment. And then one of the smaller ones, and we'll put it kind of next to it. And then the final smaller one will be over here on the edge of the sentiment. And I've got to smoosh them down here to make sure that they stick well. And Inside of the card is also pretty simple. I've got basic white cardstock, and I just did some stamping. I'm trying to get all these pieces out of the way so I don't end up with anything stamped or stuck to that I don't want. <laughs> and I've got my crumb cake ink and my two sand dollar images I've got out here again. So I'm gonna grab the smaller one, and we'll start with that one. We're gonna ink it up with crumb cake ink. Stamp it here on the edge. Do a second one up here in the corner. And then we'll ink the larger one and stamp that here over the edge. Uh, first ring, oh. oh, it's raining the whole day. Oh, that's a bummer. We, we actually, over the weekend, had some really yucky weather here. It was raining and cold and miserable. And yeah, then we got some good weather, so I'm happy about that. Hopefully you'll end up with the same thing. Um, some good weather for you in Germany. All right, using stamp and seal. Um, this is basic white cardstock that was cut to four by five and a quarter, and it will fit here on the inside of my card base. Hopefully I have everything cut correctly. There we go. Um, and again, you can kind of see the difference here between the crumb cake and the basic beige in the stamping part. Um, this one's definitely much more brown. Um, the basic beige has got a little bit more of a green tint to it, at least when I look at it, that's what I see. We're gonna close that up and do a quick crease on the top with the bone folder. Give it a good solid crease. And that's gonna be it for the card. So this is the one I made ahead of time, my sample card. Here's the one we made today. So like I said, hopefully you can kind of see the, the cool embossing and die cutting that happens when you use that hybrid embossing folder. Again, it's called Seaside Wishes. It will be available to order starting on the 1st of May for customers. Demonstrators can pre-order it now. Um, so let me know if you have questions about this. I will be posting all the details for this card on my blog tomorrow, which is stampwithamyk.com. 
And um, I will uh, link up directly to the blog post uh, once it goes live about 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So be able to see all the details, all the cardstock cuts, um, find the printable PDF and all the good stuff out on my blog tomorrow. Uh, let me know if you have questions about anything. I appreciate you all being here. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. I'll plan to be live around 2 o'clock Eastern time on Friday here on my YouTube channel. And then again next week, Tuesday, around 2 o'clock Eastern time. And then after that, I'm going to be off for a couple of weeks. Um, we're doing a little cruise in Italy. So I'll be back um, then about mid-May. I think the 14th will be my first day back. So, uh, But I'll be here for the next two videos. So we will see you all then. Thanks again for joining and um, chat with you all soon.